Hello and welcome to a new video about controls, uh, non-feedback controls. This time we're going to talk about how we can categorize controls. Uh, not the controlling itself, this was last video. Now we want to categorize the controls. Uh, and of course, there are several viewpoints from which I could see a control system. Uh, uh, this part, you know, I will explain it in the end, I hope. Yeah? So that there's not just this and this and this and this. Under this aspect, you can use those categories. Under another aspect, I can use other categories. Yeah? And the specific control does, in each and every aspect, yeah, it belongs to a category. So, one of those aspects are, is, one of those is, of course, yeah, uh, according to the signal, signal, yeah, signal. So, there are analog controls, yeah, analog controls, they are binary. And there are digital. Wow. I mean, analog and digital, I think you could have expected this, but it was binary. One by one. Huh? Analog does simply use analog signals. Huh? So a signal which can have a value between zero and whatever, or minus whatever to plus whatever, yeah? so some value simply, and from this derive the control law. So from this then derive somehow the outputs. Yeah? One possibility, I'm not sure if you have in your shower or wherever, a mixer between warm and cold water, you turn it to a certain position, analog value, yeah? and the water has a certain temperature. This would be analog control, very basic analog control, however. Now, binary and digital controls. Binary can only handle zeros and one. Yeah, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on. Yeah? That's binary controls. And digital controls, they can also handle numbers. Yeah? So they know if something is bigger, smaller, they can calculate plus, minus, or whatever. So those, those here, they only know bit, uh, and they know bit and word. Uh, so longer bit byte word, yeah, longer following, longer bit sequences, and can calculate with this. Uh. This is one way to distinguish between different controllers. Uh. The control is analog, binary, or digital. Then uh, there is the processing, signal processing. I'll use another color, processing. There are basically two ways of doing this. Yeah? So there is a synchronous or asynchronous. Yeah. Processing. Synchronous means each and every signal is processed at almost the same time. Yeah. So there are a bunch of input signals, and if they are synchronous processed, yeah, we look at the sync, we make a snapshot of these inputs yeah? and then we process it. If they are asynchronous processed, this means the signal will be processed whenever it appears. Yeah? Not, there are no snapshots and in between can happen whatever. Yeah? Whenever the signal appears, it's already taken into account. Yeah? Asynchronous. Synchronous, asynchronous. Uh, there are also then in processing, uh, you know, just link, linked controls. Yeah? 
linked and sequence controls. Doesn't really have a lot of in common with the above, all is possible. Yeah? Linked controls, there is a pattern of inputs and this pattern will immediately go to the output somehow deformed. Yeah? So there is just a link between the inputs and the outputs. Yeah? There is a link, there is, there is no sequence at all. If a certain inputs are there, the outputs will follow automatically. Yeah? Linked controls, very basic type. Yeah? Sequence controls, we talked about this, we are following some sort of, of program. Yeah? Sequence control, program control. Okay? This is more like a pilot control. Yeah? This is sequence control, program control. Okay? If it's time program or trail program or, or step and so on, does not really matter. Yeah? This is the possibility of distinguishing this according to signal processing. Okay? Then we have the distinguishing according to programming. Yeah? There might be there might be the case that the programming is simply done by, by the links. Yeah? So this is just linked programming. This means yeah, there are some wires and they do the logic. Link dot logic. Logic linked program. Yeah? Some wires. And this is coding whatever the program or whatever the control shall do. Yeah? If I have a bunch of relays or I don't know, a bunch of pneumatic or hydraulic valves and I connect them in a certain way, this thing is doing a certain sequence. Yeah? So this is linked program, yeah? Verbindungsprogramm here in German. Yeah? The link, the connection, connection programmed, the connection is given the program. Okay. There are uh, really hardwired, so non-changeable programs, but however, there you can also think of, you put in a switch somewhere and switch between two different hardwired programs. Yeah? So they might be, they might be fixed. Yeah? Or changeable. Both are possible. This linked yeah? connection, connected type program. Yeah? And the other one, the other one is uh, a PLC, programmable logic controller, yeah? memory program. PLC. The other program is somewhere in a memory yeah? and basically the, the control itself is loading the commands from this memory and is just interpreting this like a computer. Yeah? Those linked things, yeah? they are usually asynchronous. So they, they, they are usually the ones which are really, really, really fast. Yeah? So this is the big advantage of this. Yeah? Even faster signals, they can be simply read. Yeah? You don't need programming devices. You can, if it's really the case that it's there is hardwired and so on, you can even think about it and see the logic right in front of you. Yeah? Uh, so you don't even know need to know any programming languages. Yeah? Here you do have this. Yeah? You need to know programming languages. Yeah, you need a computer, you need to program this, you need special, special information. And also such PLCs are usually asynchronous. Yeah? So those asynchronous types, they are you know, not, that, not that fast. Yeah? Here 
in it with PLC. Yeah, I mean, 100 Hz is already pretty high. Yeah, If it has to be faster, you really need to think about sub-programs and so on. Then it's getting sophisticated. Yeah? Here, it's no issue. Yeah? However, you know, if you want to design such program, yeah, you really have to think about it before. Yeah? If you then, during commissioning phase, yeah, you cannot change too much. Yeah? You simply cannot change too much. That's difficult. Yeah? Because if there is an error inside the program, then it, you might end up in a situation where it's not longer possible to adapt this program, yeah? even with tools. Here, no problem at all. Yeah? Change the software, working. Yeah? Also, if I use PLCs, yeah? if I use a memory program thing, then there is usually a program, and out of this program, some parts of the documentation can be automatically generated. Yeah? Signal lists, for instance, something like this. Here, mm -mm. I, if I do a change in a connection type program, yeah, I really have to take care that all parts documenting this will follow. Yeah? Here, there are a lot of things are automated. This is also as, as a thing. Yeah? And also, Another thing is, here I need to wait until the control is really there. Here I can start to program this before the first hardware is ever ordered. Yeah? Because usually I program this on a computer. Yeah? I can even test those programs on the computer. And at a later point in time, the controller is really there and I can try it there. Yeah? Here I have to wait until the controller is really there yeah? to just test and see if my idea is working. So this is this according to program, yeah? categorization according to program. Yeah? Then uh, organization, organization, categorize according to organization. So they are usually hierarchical. Hierarchical and non-hierarchical. Organization types. Eh? Usually we live in the hierarchical world. Yeah? Usually we have a control. We have a small control. Yeah? A single control which is just controlling a small part somewhere. <laughs> turning around uh, a valve or whatever, uh, feeling the temperature turn around the valve. And, uh. So this is single control. Then there might be a control which is controlling all those single controls. Yeah? So there's a group control. Uh. And then there, there might be a control which is have the overview about the whole manufacturing process and try to use all group controls in a according way. So this is this is then the main control or something like this. Huh? Automation control. It would be such hierarchical structure. Non-hierarchical structure means it is really not defined what this control is doing. Yeah? It might turn here, it might turn here, it might order something, I don't know. Yeah? So right now we're living pretty much in hierarchical control structure. Yeah? With the intelligent sensors and so on, this might change in future to non-hierarchical. Yeah? That the sensor itself has enough intelligence yeah, to do something more. Yeah? Do not hand over its information to some group or higher level control to order new stuff. Yeah? We'll see what the future brings. Yeah? Right now, uh, hierarchical control systems, they do 
they are the majority. So these would be the applications or the fields in which I could categorize my controls. Yeah? According to the signal, according to the signal processing, according to the program of the control, and according to the organization of the, pro of the, of the control. Yeah? Next time we are going to talk about uh, how to develop controls. Yeah? First step in developing controls is to display things. Yeah? Do write somehow down what I want to have from this control. Yeah? If I don't want, if I don't know what I want to have and I don't think about what I want to have, I will end up in chaos and this should not happen. Yeah? So we have to somehow structure or somehow I will find a way how we can really easily structure the information what is needed from a control. Yeah? First thing we are going to talk about is the layout plan because Usually, if we see a plan and see what things are there, yeah, it's easier for us to start to think about the next steps. Yeah? But this will then be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.